What's good, people? In this video, I'm going to cover why React loses state when you refresh the page. I'm going to give you a few reasons why uh, you may not even want to address this issue and also some solutions that you may want to look at if this is something you need to fix in your app right now. All right. So what we have here is a uh, basic form uh, sign up page. The code is not really that critical what's going on, um, but it's just a basic sign up page. You can type in some stuff and you can hit submit and it will spin and fake submit and then it clears the form. That's pretty much all it does. So uh, what we want to look at here is let's say that let's say this was a longer form, maybe even a multi-step form, something like that. So when you type in here, let's say users on like step three and they refresh the page or leave or something like that. They close the tab. Who knows? Users do all kind of stuff. You refresh and that state is gone. So uh, when you're first getting started with an app, um, this may not be something you want to fix immediately. I don't know why it is that devs choose this particular use case to try to address. You know, at any rate, you you just getting started, you refresh the page, you lose all your state. You're like, why? What happened to my state? What's going on? Why I didn't react? Save me here. And um, it may not even be something you want to address at that time. If you're early on, you may not have decided how you even want to persist state. You may have not have decided if you want to use something like Redux, which has a Redux persist middleware, which will uh, actually solve this issue for you. But if you're not using Redux at all, uh, you know, this is still, still something you may want to address. It just may not be something to address so early on. That is the first thing to think about when you run into this problem. Why are you even refreshing the page? Is your user really going to do this? Or is this just something you did during development that you thought was weird and you feel like you need to fix? That's the first thing. Ultimately, the best solution for this issue is going to depend heavily on your app and how you've structured your state um, and, and where your app will go in the future. So we're going to cover the, the basic ways to fix this. Um, these will actually will scale uh, depending on, on how you construct your app. Should cover the base case for simply persisting state through a refresh. They close the tab and open it back up, things like that. So again, basic form it has a actually a use state here, which has the form values and update form values callback. So one of the easiest things we can do, we'll go ahead and pull in a use effect. And if you're using class components, this actually is a similar solution, maybe even easier. Instead of use effect, you could use component did update. So that, that actually will run every single time your state updates, giving you an opportunity to save your state to local storage, which is what we're gonna do here. So notice in this use effect, I am not putting a dependency array. So I'm adding a use effect here, but I do not want to put a dependency array because if I do, I will not catch all state updates in this component. So I'm going to have no dependency array. This use effect will run on every state update, which will give me an opportunity to save this state to local storage. So we'll just say window.localStorage.setItem. And that's going to take a key uh, which is going to be something that needs to be unique uh, to this particular application. So it doesn't matter. We can just do Wakanda forever. It doesn't, it does not matter at all. And we're just going to json.stringify our form values. All right. So what this means is every time state updates, it should save in local storage. Let's see. If we can pull that up here, local storage, it is empty. Let's pull that down. All right. Put Bob. And let's expand this actually to this particular app. And you can see we have a key in local storage of Wakanda forever. The value has a name, a first name, last name of Bob Dylan. Um, so, so that's a simple way to get the data to store to local storage uh, every state change. Now, how do we get it out of local storage when this app loads? Because as you can see, let's close this, the dev tools here. 
um, as you can see, even though the data is there, when we refresh this page, we still are not getting it. There's, there's a couple of ways to actually retrieve the data. What we can do, which is probably the most obvious solution, is to just have a use effect that only runs on component mount when this component is first rendered. Go ahead and call window.localstorage.getItem. We'll go ahead and use that same key, Wakanda forever, and this will give us our form data. And actually, we can update form values. Now, since we stringified the data to store it, we need to parse the data to turn it back from a string into a JavaScript object that we can actually use. We wiped it out, but we made some other changes here. So now we can see we have it stored. Now let's go ahead and pick a movie. So that's in local storage. We refresh, boom. It loads that from uh, local storage back into our form. Again, simplest, most basic way that you can make this happen. Again, all we did was every state update, we're taking state and saving it to local storage. Boom. And then whenever this component is reloaded or remounted, we go ahead and reload that data from local storage and then we put it back into our state. Now I know what you might be saying. Wow, Rai, you just gonna button up all your state values in this one little cute little object that you can just easily store in your local storage? Yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Well, we could break things out. Um, let's just say we had, let's break this thing real quick. We got a first name and set first name. That's a use state. Got an L name. Let's just do it the old fashioned way here. So we'll just take the event here, use the arrow function, set first name, e.target.value. And then that's going to be the same for our last name here. All right. Let's make sure the form still works. Boom. All right. So now, what we'll find is we can't just, this isn't gonna, this uh, save here, it's only saving our form values. So what we need to do is be more selective about what state values we wanna save, which is why I was saying earlier that how you actually solve this issue depends on exactly what your state setup is. So in this case, so let's just merge these objects, right? So, Values to save, and we'll just create an object that consists of form values. And actually, we can just do f name. Let's do it this way. So this syntax actually will will spread out our form values that we have for everything else. It'll use f name as the key and value, and l name as the key and value. Uh, for these two additional values that we want to save, which just so happen to not be in this form values object. So we should get the same exact behavior as what we had before. So it's still saving, you can tell it's still saving the favorite movie. If we set that and refresh, that's updating. So let's say Chadwick Boseman as our first name, last name, RIP Chadwick. Um, so we've entered those, we refresh. Let's see, what do we break? Ah, so the problem is we've updated how we save it, but we did not update how we retrieve the values. And then we also did not save the right object. Let's fix that part. Oh, that's because we changed the format of our data in the process here. All right, so let's start over. We got a movie, 
we refresh that's still there we set the name not submit we refresh boom we still get the name you may not have seen that because of the I did the refresh let's do it this way we got James there's no last name and we'll select message from the king as the movie boom see still there so this persists this state persists through refresh even though we have multiple state values but as you can see as our state becomes a little more complex or you know we break it up as we should you should definitely break your state up into pieces that that make sense usually with a form all of those pieces go together as a single object but if we have part of it as an object and then these other two values so then when we save and retrieve we have to take that into account and make sure that we specifically call out what pieces of state we want to save and exactly how we want to retrieve those values so as you can see this could get a little crazy um, especially doing this for every application you create so what do you do in react compose things to get custom component hooks to encapsulate logic and share that between projects and between components all right folks that's all for today once again thank you for stopping by peace